as other countries consider developing their own domestic shale resources, what are some of the key lessons they could learn from the U.S. experience? So one of the important things to understand in comparing the U.S. experience to what might occur in other countries is the ownership of the subsurface rights. Um, the U.S. context, private ownership sets up the opportunity for individual landowners uh, to benefit financially from the development and have some control over the way that development occurs on their property. In other countries, generally speaking, subsurface rights are owned by the state uh, in some manner. Um, so that sets up very different ways of potential benefit flows um, to community members and their ability to influence or control how that development occurs, how fast, the regulations that are in place, uh, and so on. So I think the first lesson is to really think through what are the ways that residents who live near the development could benefit in what ways can they have some say and some control over that development, whether that's legal processes, whether that's regulatory systems. Um, I mean, we've seen in, in Australia the lock the gate movement is largely because they have no say in that process. So it's really critical to think about those two pieces. How do people benefit? Um, how can the benefits be transferred to people through legal and regulatory uh, mechanisms? I think that's, that's sort of the first cut. The second cut is to really think about what regulations are in place. I think one of the lessons we learned here in Pennsylvania is that the existing oil and gas regulations were built for a different industry. And it took a couple years for our state system to really respond and create regulations that would be protective of the environment and the, and the, the communities. Um, so really think through those regulations up front and try to have them in place as development begins. And I think the other main lesson is to think about a way um, to monitor development. So a social impact assessment in the beginning, um, South Africa had an excellent, very comprehensive social impact assessment process um, that, that could be a lesson for other places. Um, and to really then put in place mechanisms for monitoring what happens over time. Uh, that's one of the things we don't have here, in, at least in the Marcellus, is a, is a consistent way to measure how people are perceiving development, what kinds of benefits and risks are occurring over time as, as the industry changes and matures uh, in place. Um, the other main content area I would focus on is health impacts. It's something that we don't have a great handle on here in the Marcellus or, or in the U.S. generally. So developing systems for tracking epidemiologically what happens over the course of the development. Those would be the, the prime areas I would recommend that they think about.